Hello there! I am super excited for what's inside this box. My very first e-note-taking device was the Books Note Air. I used it for over a year and I just loved it. It was my daily driver at work and it's only when I moved on to the Super Note, which fit my needs a little bit better, that I moved away from the Note Air. And I actually ended up giving my original Note Air to a co-worker who still uses it to this day. I have tons of fond memories about it. It was a fantastic device. And I remember thinking if I could list all the things that would make it better, that might be worthy of an upgrade, what was the top thing that I would want? And the thing I had on that list was color. And that's what we have here. This is a few generations later from that original Note Air. This is the book's uh, Note Air 3C, which doesn't roll off the tongue. We'll be calling it the 3C from here on out. But this feature is the latest in e-ink color. That's Kaleido 3. It's 300 ppi, which is kind of the gold standard for black and white. It's half that at 150 ppi in color, but we've seen a number of devices so far, and the color is very functional and very effective. Sometimes it excels, maybe sometimes not as much, but generally quite good in my opinion. And to have that on the Note Air product is pretty amazing. Just to go over some other specs about this device, it's got four gigabytes of RAM, which should be plenty has 64 gigabytes of storage space. However, it does have the ability to insert cards up to uh, two terabytes of additional storage. In addition to that, it's got Android 12. So that was a little bit of a surprise, not a huge surprise, but a little bit of a surprise. And then here's the main surprise. It comes with a dedicated GPU. So Books talks about their technology. They call it the super refresh technology or something like that. I kind of hate that phrase because I feel like it's all marketing, but in practical terms, what it does mean, which is an actual benefit, is that they use a GPU to base and their software to basically try to eliminate and reduce ghosting and improve refresh rates um, based on what you're viewing and the type of modes that you're using. And it's been pretty effective in the Tab series. The bombshell when they announced this device was that this device would also have that technology, specifically that GPU which is intriguing because we thought the difference between the Note series and the Tab series, which features this technology and these GPUs, was going to be the GPU itself. And that turns out not to be the case. So one of the interesting questions right off the bat is what then distinguishes the Note airline from the Tab line? That's one thing we're going to be exploring in the coming videos. In addition to that, now that we know that this device features uh, the uh, GPU, historically we thought of the GPU as being quite power hungry. And if you compare the battery in this device versus the Tab Ultra C, I think it's something like uh, I calculated like 58% of the battery. I may be off on that a little bit. A much smaller battery on the Note, the 3C. Um, so how will that factor? I have a lot of questions around that, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Uh, in this video, we're going to do uh, a little bit of an unboxing, and then we're going to go into more of an overview of the hardware itself, the, of the device, the cover, the stylus, and things like that. Um, and then we'll kind of set the stage for future videos. So there's going to be a series of videos. I have a lot of questions and things I want to test out on this device, so please subscribe for that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and do the unboxing. Now, just before I get to that, I think boxings are both fun and completely pointless. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have a little bit of fun with it. As I do the unboxing, we're gonna speed up the video and we'll add some music, a cool track I got off of the YouTube library, which I think you'll enjoy. And so hopefully it'll make it a little more fun than just a dry opening of a box. All right, let's get to it. myself wondering, what did happen to the last ten? I ran away with my life fast forward, never turn back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true. I'm just as surprised as you.
Okay, so this is it. Let me be kind of clear about what we're looking at here. So the actual device itself comes with the included stylus, it comes with the device, it comes with the USB-C charger, which charges here, if you're holding the device normally, it would be on the left side as you face it. And then it comes with this, um, I don't know what the name of this is, but basically this is what allows you to open up the tray to put in the uh, expanded memory card. So it's got a little device to do that. The nibs, and I think there's five nibs in here, is actually part of the bundle if you buy directly from uh, books itself, as is the case, the cover. And we'll go into a deeper uh, look at the cover and how it works, because it's kind of intriguing. But uh, just a couple of thoughts about the bundle itself. Um, the beauty, or advantage, I should say, of using the bundle is that for $500, which is the price of the device, you're getting the, the nibs, which you know is okay, but the cover comes along with it. If you buy from Amazon, you're not getting the cover and the nibs, you're just getting the, the device and the things that come with the device. So um, that's the advantage. The disadvantage of ordering directly from books is that if there are any issues with the device where a return is warranted, that's a very difficult process. So you have to be really sure that you want the device, it's the device for you, and you don't intend to return it, and you hope that everything works out well, which for me, knock on wood, it has so far. But I do recommend that people purchase from Amazon just for that ability to return the device um, should issues arise early on. Um, now, the d disadvantage, of course, is it's $500 for the device. There's no cover. You'd have to buy that extra. I'm not sure what the cover runs. Probably about $50, I would imagine. Um, but, but that's the reason why I would steer people to Amazon. And as an added bonus, this year when they announced the book's product, uh, this particular product, the 3C, they had it available on Amazon almost immediately. I think it was that evening. That's not been the case in the past. You had to wait for Amazon. So now uh, Amazon's an even more attractive uh, option because you can buy it at, right at product launch. And again, you have the ability to do the returns. But I felt very confident I wasn't going to have to return. Plus, for this review, I really wanted the cover. So I went ahead and got the bundle. And I've usually uh, purchased directly from books in the past, um, and it's been okay. There was one instance where I purchased the Max Lumi 2, did not like it, wanted to return it. That was such a pain that I ended up actually better off selling it on eBay than returning the device due to restocking fees, etc. So a little bit of buyer beware. I do recommend most people purchase straight from Amazon for that purpose, but at least you understand the dynamics and can make your own decision. Okay, let's start talking about the main attraction here. Just to give you some dimensions on this, it's about uh, 226 millimeters uh, this way, which is about 8.9 inches. If you go this way, it's 193 for 7.6 inches, and it's a nice lean 5.8 millimeters thick, which is the equivalent of uh, 0.23 of an inch. Uh, as I mentioned before, you've got the USB cable here, uh, or at least the, the, the port, you have a fingerprint sensor button here on top, which is nice. I don't actually use the fingerprint functionality on any of my devices, but I do appreciate that it's not just a thin power button. It's a nice button to kind of touch, and so that's why I appreciate that. So that's there. This is the side the magnet goes on, so the stylus connects like that, or you can reverse it around and connect it like that. I think it connects a little bit better with the with the tip facing down. The bottom side uh, appears pretty flush, not a lot going on there. Where are the speakers on this thing? Oh yes, you can barely see them, but on the same side as the USB-C port, you can see, you can barely see it. I'll see if I can bring it in there, there you go. You can see a speaker grill there, and you can see a speaker grill right there as well. And the last piece we're missing is the card slot. Let's see if we can find that. Where is that? Might be, I see there's a, let's get that in there. There's a little dot right there. Is that it? I can't tell with the lighting. Hold on a second, let me check this out. Okay, that was quite a, quite a hunt to try to find that. So I knew that this dot 
right here probably wasn't it. I just didn't see any type of um, any other indication it was there. And I didn't want to take this and start poking at it in case it was a microphone. And it probably is a microphone. The actual slot is hard to see, but you've got the USB there. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, right there, right above my fingertip is actually the slot for the card. Let's go ahead and insert this in there and see if we can pull that out. Oops. Aha! Where did it go? Ah, there it is. All right. So there is the card reader right there. We'll just go ahead and pop that back in. Very hard to find. Very hidden. We talked, oh, uh, one last thing. This is measuring at 430 grams. That's what they say. I've got a scale toward the end of the video. We'll actually measure this and we'll measure all the things combined to get a sense of it. But so far, just in terms of weight distribution, this is very similar to the Note Air that I remember. Uh, pretty good weight distribution for a 10 inch device. Um, not too heavy, but you do feel the half. This certainly isn't light like an e-reader, of course. I mean, that's probably saying the obvious. Um, but one of the questions about this device is it can it be the one device to rule them all? And by that, I just mean the one that does enough things well enough that it can handle all of the things you'd want to do with the ink. So could this be not just the note taker, which I think a 10 inch screen is naturally inclined to excel at, but can it also be a daily reader? And so that's something I'll be testing. And so far, maybe it's a touch on the heavier side, so I'm not sure that we'll find out in testing over time, but possibly. Um, the coloring is hard to place. You can certainly make out the orange accents. You're getting a little bit of fingerprint smudges um, on the back. Not sure how to explain the color. It's almost, it's almost like a darker gunmail gray kind of color. Um, it looks nice. It goes well with the orange. You don't normally see a lot of style with books devices. They've been a little bit better uh, the last couple of years, but their Note Airline, I think, is, is probably as far out as they go in terms of design. Um, the stylus itself is what they call the Pen Plus. Um, there's no eraser. That may upset some people, um, but the actual uh, software has a new eraser feature I'm going to be very excited to test out. Um, which might make that, an ex the eraser that is, an extraneous function. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Um, and I actually tend to prefer this pen over the Pen Plus. I just like the texture of the ridges, um, which I'm not sure if it's coming out very well on the video, but there's basically lines that run um, across the length of the shaft, and uh, they're just kind of nice to grip onto. So I've always been a fan of this type of stylus. And I guess this is one of the aspects that differentiates this from the tab line, which I think generally ships with the, the Pro Pen. Okay, so now that leaves us with the cover. And I have to say right off the bat, I have very mixed feelings about this cover. Now in terms of the texture and feel of it, um, it's not too bad. It's very reminiscent of the Tab Mini C. Not quite as good as the Tab Mini C. I feel like the Tab Mini C is a little bit softer. This is a little bit harder, maybe a touch plasticier, um, if that's a word. Um, but the other thing that in particular I don't like about this is that it's a trifold, which Books loves trifold cases. They're convinced that you love trifold cases too. And maybe you do, I don't know, but I don't like it. Why? Because when I put it in the device, I like to take the front cover and wrap it around the back. I'll show you. So we've got a magnetic device that connects like that. Nice connection. That's what it looks like when it's closed. So you can see there's room here for the stylus to attach. So it's a nice flap, so that's great. You can take the flap and attach it on the back. Okay. And then what I like to do is take the cover and move it back like this. So it's a little annoying. It's a little floppy with the trifold. Um, but right now, just having done that, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too annoying. So well, maybe I'll get used to this. Now, what's intriguing about this is that it comes in three different um, configurations. I think they call this the versatile protective case. That's books with the um, really snazzy 
titles there. But um, let me let's kind of see what that looks like. Let's start with the most intriguing one, which is the stand, which which I'm actually super curious about. So let's let's see how this works. So I think I have to take this out. You take this triangle fold and you fold it in, and then you end up with these flaps, which should magnetically connect to the device, in theory. Yeah, there it is. So you get a nice angle on the device. Um, that's what it looks like from the back. Kind of cool. I don't know, that's, that's interesting. I'll have to play with it to see what I think about it, if it's actually functional or not. But, um, but it definitely works. Let's go ahead and try some of the other configurations. We'll have to, so let's see if I was slicker, I could have done it without disconnecting the device. Let's see, let's see if we could, let's, let's try that. So we've got it connected. If, oh, maybe I can't do this. Yeah, you, okay, so you, you fold it like this on that edge. Then you bring in the triangle, and then you take the other flap and you magnetically connect that. That's how that works. Okay, I'm not sure how that's played on the camera, so hopefully you were able to make sense of that. But you just need this one strip connected and then you can kind of manipulate the rest of the cover. All right, let's see how, there's also the classic triangle configuration. Let's see if we can figure out how to do that. It. There we go. Like like so. Okay, so it gives you a, a nice angle this way. I'll just do a little quick side view so you can see that. That's basically how it works. And then you can also then do the classic, the, the iPad. Uh, for those that remember when that first came out, I, I know they're still around, but that's when I first saw this type of, of case. And so it stands like that, and you can see the, the triangle there. So that is the case in action. So believe it or not, um, I get a lot of great ideas from the people that watch my videos and kind of ask me to, to focus on different aspects. And one time I had, I was reviewing a device and a person asked me what the weight of it is. And what I normally do is I go to the manufacturer site and find out what the weight was. And this person basically said, well, actually you can't trust that that the actual weights of the devices vary from what is displayed. And actually I found that to be true um, in one particular device I'd reviewed. So I literally bought this scale just for this purpose. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And we're gonna go ahead and just go to, yeah, we've got on grams. So let's go ahead, the manufacturer said 430 grams. Let's see how close this comes. No. 444. That's 14 grams heavier than what they stated. Let's go ahead and add in the stylus. Four fifty-eight. So the stylus is coming in around 14 grams. That's about right. That's it's pretty standard for book styluses. Now let's go ahead and add the cover and see what the total weight of the entire package is. Seven hundred and twenty, so a little bit chunky. When I hold it in my hand, um, you can definitely feel the weight. But that actually, I would argue, is a good weight to have. It makes you feel a little more comfortable that the uh, cover is covering the device and protecting it. And honestly, that's what's beautiful about magnetic cases. So if you're actually going to use this as a reader, you don't have to use it with the cover on. You just pry it off, and you're good to go. So anyway. That's your way in. So that pretty much wraps up this video, which is the hardware review, but there's a lot more stuff to come. I have a lot of questions. So we talked earlier in the video about knowing there's a GPU in this. Well, what's that impact gonna mean for the battery life? I'll be doing extensive battery testing. It'll take a while for that video to come out, but I'm gonna be starting pretty soon. We definitely interested in that. Another question we have is, you know, as I mentioned earlier as well, can this be an effective e-reader? Can this be the one device that handles everything that you do with e-ink? I don't know, we'll have to take a look at that. Another question is the software features. I talked a little bit 
about uh, the eraser function, at least in vague passing. But there's other new features too that I'm very interested in checking out. So we're going to be doing a little bit of an overview and a review of that as well. And then I'm just curious, ultimately, how does this device stack up? How does it stack up to the Tab Ultra C, the Big Me Ink Note Plus, the Super Note, even uh, the Tab Mini C? Like, how does this device fit in? I have so many questions. I'm super excited to start to review this um, and finally get my copy. So there's going to be a lot of videos over the next few weeks, and we're going to be exploring all those things. As long as there's an interesting angle, I'm going to go look into it. So hopefully you'll be there with me, and we're just going to have a fun time with this. Uh, the next video, and I'm going to work really hard tomorrow to kind of get this out, is we're going to do a visual tour of the device in action. We'll do the, what it takes to go through the startup process. We'll actually tour the UI. We'll tour the note-taking app. We'll tour the reading app a little bit with Google Play and what have you. So we're going to go a deep dive into how this device performs. So the device itself will be front and center. The camera will be square on the device and we'll film it as we go through this tour and you'll get a first-hand view of what it's actually like to work with the 3C. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you in future videos. Until then, have a great day.